It's been about 11 years since Kirby's last traditional installment, and though we've seen creative spin-off games of the franchise such as Epic Yarn and Mass Attack, it never quite satisfied Kirby fans like the classic side-scrolling, platforming, suck-em-up, ability-stealing goodness we all love about Kirby. But now, 11 years later, the prayers of all Kirby fans have been answered with his latest installment, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Kirby's Return to Dreamland starts off like you would think a Kirby game would. King Day 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 along with Bandana D are chasing after the shortcake hogging Kirby in an attempt to reclaim it. While this goes on, a portal opens with a damaged and now falling apart ship crashing into the peaceful land of Popstar. Witnessing from afar, Kirby and Co. go and investigate. Upon arriving, they meet a rather jester-looking alien named Magalore. Discovering that vital parts of his ship, now named Lord Starcutter, has been scattered around five areas of Popstar, Kirby and Co. volunteers to go venture out and recover Magalore's missing parts to his ship, and so the adventure begins. As you may expect, Kirby's Return to Dreamland doesn't have much of a plot, but only a chain of events just to move along the game. While it's simple, you won't think anything of it. Gameplay in Kirby's Return to Dreamland is standard style the original had. To control Kirby, you hold the Wiimo Classic style. The one button is the attack button, which also allows Kirby to suck. Also, the two button is the jump button, while the A button allows Kirby to block. Shaking the Wii Remote while sucking will make Kirby Super Suck and have various other actions with enemies and abilities. There's a world map which consists of five worlds. Each have four or five levels which are depicted as doors, much like superstars. Depending on how many levels, the fifth or sixth level acts as the world's boss. This again varies. The old mechanics are back. Kirby can again endlessly float dash, block, and suck up enemies and use their powers as his own. Copy abilities have never been as diverse as they are in Kirby's Return to Dream. Each copy ability has a surprisingly vast amount of moves. These different moves are activated by a certain button combination with the Wiimote's D-pad and the 1 button. Some are actually complicated in some ways, but not enough to the point where it will annoy you or leaving you vulnerable to attacks. Performing these moves are both satisfying and stylish. In general, Kirby's Return to Dreamland is easy, but to be fair, there are some levels and bosses that are actually somewhat difficult. These are in the later worlds. There are some items in the game that Kirby will use, like a shoe that's a nod to Super Mario Bros. 3, a horn that projects a rainbow shield, and an automatic cannon, and a candle. These both aid and reveal hidden or blocked off areas for Kirby that will roar you gears that are spread throughout a level for you to find. Some of these gears are rather easy to find and some are cleverly hidden with you having to complete a puzzle like obstacle. Some are fun and some are downright devious. Also with copy abilities come super abilities where Kirby unleashes a massive attack. These attacks are really used to reveal hidden areas with Kirby losing his ability and sent to an obstacle course like area racing to avoid being crushed by the dark. After you complete this course, you will find a melee boss and acquire one or two gears. Kirby isn't the only character here. As a matter of fact, three other people can join in as either Meta Knight, Day Day Day, or Bandana D. But if you want to use copy abilities, other players can choose to be a different color Kirby, so no one is left out. It's fun to play with others, but also annoying when players aren't competent. For when a player dies, it takes a life off your stockpile. And like New Super Mario Bros. Wii, players can actually get you killed or be in the way. But overall, it's still a fun experience to play with others. After defeating a world's boss, you will be rewarded with a part of Magalore's ship, and then move on to the next world. 
After collecting a certain amount of gears, you'll unlock various amounts of content inside the Lord Starcutter. Mini games, challenge rooms, and even copy ability rooms. There's a total of two mini games. One is an arcade style shoot 'em up, and the other tests your reflex skills with the Wiimote. Both have their fun times, but are easily forgettable. You can add three other players to them, but after a while, they won't keep your attention. Challenge rooms test your skills with the copy ability and are surprisingly challenging. You race against the clock for the best time through an obstacle course littered with enemies. These are the funnest of all the extras, while copy ability rooms just offer you a select amount of abilities for you to practice with. Other than that, the challenge rooms themselves will make you determined enough to replay levels in search of more gears. The music of Kirby's Return to Dreamland is nothing short of catchy and addictive, as all Kirby game music has been. New tracks and some with old songs cleverly integrated are all here. You will be searching for these songs probably after the first hour of the game. Kirby's Return to Dreamland is a great addition to the franchise so far, but after waiting 11 years, the game is a bit underwhelming when it comes to the length and in some areas it does seem dull. There will be times where you wish something was added or simply that something is missing. The difficulty is expected to be easy, but if you want a game to challenge you, I'd have to advise you to try Donkey Kong Country Return. Otherwise, the game will insult your skills. But even with these few flaws, Kirby's Return to Dreamland is a blast to play. It's charming, colorful, and in some ways, a very cool game. Definitely worth your time. If you're looking for a good platformer filled with replay value, then this is what you're looking for. Oh.